I've got a very exciting uh, guest in the building with me. Um, his name is Patrick McBride and he is from Bolton Triathlon Club. Correct. And I have got many questions coming up for him. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, Patrick, and the floor is yours. I'm always here. <laughs> um, I'm an Ironman, which I'm very proud of. And uh, hopefully be an Ironman again this year, but depending on my commitments and such. But, but yeah. <laughs> So how long have you been a part of the Bolton Triathlon Club? Uh, I joined about 18 months ago yeah. and I joined specifically to do Ironman because I hadn't ridden a bike, I hadn't been swimming or running for years. So um, I, w- I went for their expert advice, knowledge, um, beautiful people and they're very invited. It doesn't matter what level you start at, I started at a very low level. I think everybody thought initially that I was... Um, unrealistic to think I would do the Ironman right yeah but um, yeah I got some good coaching good advice support um, they have an Ironman day they run each year which um, they had an 80-20 cafe this year and they give nutritional advice training advice and also other things which are important like massage and obviously meditation yes yeah so you know of the mind so we'll we'll uh, jump to the meditation of the mind in a little bit yeah. um so did you do ironman last year as well i did indeed yeah. Uh, yeah how did you find it um wonderful i was yeah. in a state of bliss the whole time um because i was peaceful uh, i think a big thing with ironman is everybody focuses on the body yeah. which is massively important because you've got to train but uh, another aspect which everybody seems to neglect is the mind the mind and when I set off to do the Ironman, we set off to do the swim in the morning, and there was other athletes with me who I knew who were far more capable and much fitter, more athletic than I was, um, who some, you know, s- some of them didn't, didn't actually finish it. And um, you've got things like anxiety that build up, yes. you, adrenaline, you burn energy and stuff. So it's really important to have a peaceful mind while you're training. And then you sleep better, your body heals better, you recover quicker, um, you know, and you're, you're happy. So would that be your advice, really, for anyone who's wanting to do it this year or indeed in the future? Yeah, I, I think the training's crucial, obviously. Uh, you've got to get your body to a certain level to be able to compete to do it. So you need to train regularly, have a plan. Realistically, you need to look at training for probably a minimum of six months before the event, maybe even 12 months. It depends on, you, you know, where you're up to. Yeah. But you've got to take it very seriously. It's a big commitment. Uh, you have to sacrifice a lot of things. Um, you have to start eating correctly as well and be quite disciplined. Yeah. Um, I'm motivated. I'm motivated. <laughs> but the, the other aspect is, is the mind, yeah. And I think it's very important that if you stay calm on the actual day when I had a man last year, everything went wrong. Everything. Uh, everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. But I stayed calm, didn't get anxious about it, just... Um, kept moving forward and I got round it was a miracle but I got round so so what have you been doing to prepare for this year have you done anything differently or well well, this year it's in abeyance because I've um, I've had the commitments I, I actually at this point I won't know until near the time whether I can do it or not right but last year I only actually um, signed up to do the Ironman about seven days before I trained for it but um, I only actually registered very close to the event this year again it's going to be similar don't know but um, at the minute, I'm just doing maintenance, so I do some cycling, swimming and rugby, uh, running on a fairly regular basis. As you get close to the Ironman, build that training up, and at my peak last year before the Ironman, uh, I was actually training for about five hours a day, doing, you know, trying to do all three um, disciplines on the same day, yeah. um, rotating it. So, yeah, it's a, bit, it's a big commitment. Were you going into the gym, or were you just doing this outside? No, everything outside. Yeah. Uh, I had to do some swimming inside. Yeah. But uh, Bolton Triathlon Club uh, organise open water swimming sessions as well. They do ah, okay. Elton Reservoir. Um, they also do sessions at Pennington Flask where the actual swim is. Um, but the majority of my training, with the exception of swimming, swimming, everything's outside. You want it to be as real as possible. Yeah. So you don't yeah, really want to be on a running machine. You don't really <laughs> want to be on a, a, a pedal bike in a gym. Ideally, you want to be outside. And, and I love it anyway, I love the fresh air, yeah. I like being outside. Yeah. And on different terrain as well, yeah. you're not just going to be on a flat surface, are you, the entire time? Ex- exactly, yeah. Uh, what made you want to do it? <laughs> uh, well, I actually went, a- anything, uh, you've got a poster in here as you come into your office, yeah. on the wall, and it basically says that uh, everything you want is outside your comfort zone. Oh, I love that quote. Yeah. yeah. So, I watched the Iron Man, and uh, 
I realised that I saw people of all different shapes and sizes and abilities completely Iron Man, and then it occurred to me it's not actually it's not just a physical thing. It's about the mind. You know, yeah. it's about as you go into the Ironman, especially into the cycle, which you can be on the bike for six, seven hours, um, your greatest enemy you'll face is your mind. And what'll happen is doubt will creep in and you'll start thinking, God, I've, I'm never going to finish this. Yeah. I've always just set off on the cycle and all these thoughts will come through. And it's learning, it's inner mastery. It's learning how to master your thoughts and your mind. And that's that was what excited me about Ironman. I thought, if I can do it, which I've proven I can now, anybody can because... You know, I had no training, and within 12 months, I went from being um, very unfit, uh, eating a lot of processed food, and I was three stone heavier. I dropped three stone, and it's through regular exercise and um, and a lot of guidance from Bolton Triathlon Club. Yeah. Um, well, that leads me nicely on to uh, another question. Um, so, the, not just the physical training, but the mental training. How much goes into the preparation, like for such a challenging event of both yeah. aspects, really? Well, most, a lot of the athletes I know, uh, Bolton Triathlon Club have a, a great range. You can basically go and you've never done any discipline before. You can not, not run, not cycle, not swim, turn up, and you can start from nothing. They've also got very advanced athletes, um, Erica Booth, Don Wiley, um, Lucas. These these are all people that have competed at an international level, right, all okay. GBR athletes. Yeah. Um, remind me of your question, Lucy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the physical and the mental training, yeah. how much do you really have to do for such a challenging yeah. event? Most people focus on the physical. Uh, for me, uh, meditation is crucial. You know, um, if my mind's right, and I'm relaxed. It's like if you swing a golf club. If you swing a golf club and you're tense, you can't. It's a swing. It's a relaxed motion. With your body's the same. Once you relax and your mind's clear and you're peaceful, you'll find that your body can do what it's supposed to do. It can heal, repair, and grow. So it's really important to have a clear mind and um, certainly not be getting anxious and worried as you get close to the event. Is to stay peaceful. Well, you teach meditation, don't you? That's just correct, Lucy. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I. Um, I teach various locations. Uh, at the minute, the classes, as of February, I stopped teaching for a couple of months because I've just released a book, and that needed all my focus and attention. But I teach meditation at many locations around Bolton, including, um, I taught at the 8020 Cafe. What was the Healthy Indulgence Cafe? It's now called um, Earth's Bounty. I taught about Earthlings, the coffee shop at Heaton, uh, Rochdale's Gallery in Touchdown, uh, many locations, yeah. And I've been guest speaker for the NHS tinnitus week as oh, well, well. So i have really bad tinnitus we can i need to speak to you i need to speak to you because meditation can massively help with uh, tinnitus oh know. well yeah because it's been something i mean uh, from what, like a very very young age and i remember mm. my mum having to take me to the hospital just to do hearing tests yeah um, and i remember the the reason that she'd noticed that i had it is i'd just be sat in the dining room um in the in ho at home and I've been going no oh, why is that kit uh, why is that yeah. fridge humming why is it humming and she's like it's not it's fine mm. and I think I said it enough times that she was like right, something. <laughs> yeah. we're going sorting this out and it's just been there ever since so we'll definitely speak to you about yeah. that and um, so what does like teaching meditation entail okay and can I just say now Stuart I'm sorry I'm plugging Bolton Triathlon Club but I can't talk about anything without relating it to the mind <laughs> so do forgive me um Sorry, Lucy. The question again. Sorry. Um, uh, what does thought. it entail? Meditation. Yeah. It's and especially like the teaching of it as yeah. well. Well, Blaise Pascal said, "All man's problems stem from his inability to sit quietly in a room on his own." So most human beings have, um, if we're not happy, what we do is derive pleasure externally. So from material things, so computer games, shopping, alcohol, wh whatever it is, yeah, um, distractions, things that make um rather than focus on where the real problems are which is inside and usually it's incorrect thought patterns and with meditation you learn how to quiet the mind because it's it's like being sometimes it's like a ship at sea without a rudder and you've just been thrashed around in a storm and your mind's busy yeah and with meditation um initially usually with breathing meditations where you focus on the breath and concentrate you learn to quiet the mind and when your mind's quiet you can then make very clear decisions you can concentrate you're creative you can you rest better, you sleep better, yeah. so you're in a better mood, you have more energy. Um, you function as a better human being when you meditate and you learn how to quiet the mind. Now, you've uh, brought a book out, haven't you? Is it coming out? The book's out. Is it published already? Yes. Um, so, 
let me know. Let us all know what that's about. Okay, thank you, Lucy. <laughs> uh, I did ask for permission off Lucy before that I could go off track a bit, and she said that was all right. So, um, yeah, the book's called From Pills to Peace My Journey into Meditation, and it's by me, but. Um, when I'm writing a book, my name's Midnight McBride, and that's my sessions I teach is Meditations by Midnight, so it's Midnight. Yeah. Um, the book's about my journey, basically, where I set off in life, and I, I got to a point where I was very unhappy, and I learned through meditation, but also a key aspect, which is very relevant to what we're talking about now, is through exercise. I've learned through endurance sport that when you move past, say, uh, one hour into a particular discipline, then it becomes meditative, and you right. end up your mind goes quiet, you focus on the breath, and I can be in complete peace. Once I start running, I get past my first 10, 15 K, I'm in bliss, you know. Uh, so the book, so the journey, my journey to this point, which was um, turbulent to say the least, mm. and, but then it shows the transformation, the awakening where I evolved basically. One day I woke up and realized that I wasn't happy and I thought I need to change. Um, and I then learned how to meditate and the book also then goes through different types and techniques of meditation as well. So it's part auto, uh, part biography, but also um, techniques for meditation as well. Yeah. So you've used your experiences, as it were, to influence you to write this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, th there's a, quote, a number of quotes in the book. One is, um, if you could back, if you could go back, would you change anything? And I'd say, yes, of course. I've grown, evolved, so I've made different decisions. But then the question is, do you regret anything? No, of course not, because then I wouldn't have grown or evolved. Yeah. So the whole point is irrelevant of what's happened in the past. It's part of your journey to this point. All we ever have is now, this present moment. So we start from now, let the past go, and you move forward. I think that if you hadn't had the experiences that you have had, would you be where you are now? Exactly. Would you have done a certain thing? Exactly. Or? I would have nothing to write about in a book if I hadn't ever had a turbulent ride to this point. So it's all relevant. And... Each time we go through life and we do something, we learn, evolve and grow. So there's no mistakes, it's just lessons, you know, and you learn as you go. Very true. Um, what made you turn to, I know you're saying it's because you're unhappy, but what made you think, do you know what's going to solve my unhappiness is exercise or trying to sort mm. my thoughts out? For me, it's a balance of the two and you go hand in hand. So um, if I don't meditate and I just exercise, um, I might get anxious or I, I might not sleep properly, recover. Uh, vice versa, if I just meditate and I don't exercise it, I, my mind's healthy, but I need to maintain my body as well. So the two go, they're, they're intrinsic, you know, they go together. Yeah. Right, this is all very interesting, but I am going to take a break.